Is tech dead in 2026? The market might seem so oversaturated, there's no point in trying. And honestly, I get why people believe this. Layoffs have been brutal and entry-level roles have dried up. But here's what people are missing. The tech job market isn't dead, it's split. It's true that the skills that are getting people hired in the early 2020s are not the same skills getting people hired today. And the data proves it. Job postings requiring AI-related skills have more than doubled year over year, showing a 104% increase in postings mentioning AI skills from 2024 to mid-2025. In this video, I'll break down the tech skills that will matter the most in 2026, why each one is in demand, and exactly how to start learning them, ending with the one that I think is the most underrated. For the current job market in 2026, companies don't just want someone who can just write code anymore. They want engineers who understand automation, who can work with AI systems, and who can build things that scale and monitor themselves. Hi friends, I'm Maddie. I'm a senior software engineer who previously worked at Google, and Internet, Amazon, IBM, and Microsoft. I went through hiring data from Indeed, reports from the World Economic Forum and LinkedIn to figure out what's actually getting people hired right now. Let's start with a pretty obvious one, AI and ML literacy. AI literacy in 2026 doesn't mean being an AI engineer and building large language models from scratch. It means understanding how they work. 86% of employers expect AI and information technologies to transform businesses by 2030, and many are planning to reskill or upskill employees for an AI-enabled future. That's why 4% of job listings contain AI terms at the end of 2025 up from 2% in 2020. The reason why employers want this is because they want engineers who understand how AI thinks and can evaluate it, guide it, and catch bias before it hits production. You don't need to be building the next GPT or Frontier model. You need to understand how to use AI tools effectively, how to evaluate which models to use for what task, and critically what AI cannot do. However, keep in mind that even if you aren't going to be building models yourself, foundational machine learning skills are critical for understanding things like how models are trained, what embeddings represent, how loss functions and optimization works at a high level, the difference between training and inference, how data quality impacts outputs, and where bias and hallucinations actually come from. In terms of compensation, AI engineers are commanding serious salaries. The median is around $232,000, with major tech and AI foundational model companies pushing salaries and bonuses past a million. And it is one of the fastest growing areas in terms of job postings. To get started, you don't need to enroll in a master's program. Begin by understanding understanding the basics of how models are trained and deployed. Get comfortable with concepts like inference, model serving, and ML ops. Then pick one area to go deeper, whether that's NLP, computer vision, or building AI agents. The second skill to note is data engineering fundamentals. People often forget that every AI model is only as good as the data it gets, and companies have realized this the hard way. It seems like a lot of companies are actively looking for engineers who can clean, structure, and move data across systems reliably. Think about it. Your company can have the best AI team in the world, but if your data pipelines are a mess, your models are going to produce garbage. I'm not saying that people should automatically switch to becoming data engineers. I'm instead saying that you should understand data concepts and try working with tools like SQL, Python, Apache Spark, Kafka, and data warehousing solutions like Snowflake. If you know how to build reliable data pipelines, you're not just valuable, you are essential. You are building the foundation for every AI product that follows. You can start with SQL fundamentals, then move on to Python for data manipulation, and get comfortable with at least one cloud data warehouse. Now, one thing that both ties a lot of these skills together and saves you time is automation. And the best way to learn automation is by actually building something. That's why I want to tell you about Hostinger, who's sponsoring this video. If you're looking to practice building real automation workflows, one of the best tools out there is N8N. It's a visual automation builder that lets you connect APIs, trigger actions, and build workflows without writing tons of code. N8N Cloud can get expensive, but you can self-host N8N on a Hostinger virtual private server or VPS and run unlimited workflows for just the cost of hosting. We're talking up to four times savings compared to the cloud version with unlimited executions and no restrictions on concurrent workflows. One of the automations I run on my hosting or VPS is an AI news workflow that I use to keep updated on the AI landscape and to get topic ideas for my tech and AI news reels. It pulls the latest AI news, aggregates and summarizes it, and sends it to me every morning. Hostinger makes it super easy with their one-click NAN installation template that you can 
can choose during setup. I picked the KVM2 plan because it offers better pricing over time, includes two extra months, and comes with a free domain, which would be perfect for hosting a personal website on. Head over to hostinger.com slash Maddie10 and use the code Maddie10 for a discount. Building real automation projects like this is exactly the kind of hands-on experience that makes you stand out in interviews. The third skill to know is Python. Python is the most common programming language asked for in job listings, followed by Java, C++, and SQL. Now, I know what some of you might be thinking. Even if you're not a traditional software engineer or come from a traditional computer science background, for most tech roles, you're still going to need to automate things and connect systems, and Python can really help with that. Think about what Python actually gets used for in the real world. For example, you can use Python to write scripts that automatically clean up old files or backups, pull data from APIs and generate reports, automate deployment tasks, and connect different services together. None of this requires you to be an expert software engineering genius. It just requires you to understand the fundamentals and know how to problem solve. Python is definitely the glue that holds a lot of modern tech stacks together. Whether you're working with data, AI, cloud infra, or automation, Python shows up. If you're looking to learn it from scratch, I'd recommend automate the boring stuff with Python. It teaches you fundamentals through practical exercises, not just theory. Once you've got the basics down, pick a real problem you have and try to solve it with code. That's where the actual learning happens. Here's another skill that's growing faster than almost anything else, cybersecurity. According to IBM's Cost of Data Breach Report, the global average breach now costs about $4.88 million. And attacks are only getting more and more sophisticated, especially with AI being used by bad actors. The Computing Technology Industry Association's projections show 367% growth for cybersecurity analysts and engineers over the next decade. In 2026, cybersecurity isn't a niche anymore, it's baseline. You need to understand how zero trust networks work, how to secure APIs and LM endpoints, and how to design systems with privacy by default. What's great about cybersecurity is that it's one of the more accessible paths into tech. Security roles often require less traditional experience than other tech jobs, making them accessible for people who focus on certifications and hands-on practice. CompTIA Security Plus is a good starting point, and then you can specialize from there. Next up, let's talk about cloud and DevOps skills. Cloud computing grew by about 17.9% year over year. And it's not just about knowing how to spin up an EC2 instance anymore. Companies want engineers who understand containerization with Docker, orchestration with Kubernetes, and infrastructure as code using tools like Terraform. They want people who can build CI CD pipelines that catch bugs before they hit production. Remember that Knight Capital story where one manual deployment error cost them $440 million in 45 minutes? That's exactly what automated pipelines prevent. I'd recommend picking one cloud provider and sticking with it. AWS is the most common one, but Azure and GCP would also be valid choices and get hands-on. But don't just follow tutorials step-by-step. -step. Build something real, deploy it, intentionally break it, and then fix it. You can set up a simple CI CD pipeline for one of your personal projects. The goal isn't to memorize commands, it's to understand why each stage of a pipeline exists and is necessary. That's what hiring managers are looking for in the interviews. They'll ask you to explain the pipeline you built and the decisions you made not to recite back syntax. You can also take a certification test. 73% of AWS professionals reported a salary increase averaging more than 27% after passing their certification. Finally, and this one in my opinion might be the most underrated one, skill number six is systems thinking and technical communication. System thinking is one of the top meta skills for the AI era because it lets you understand how a local decision affects a global system. When you can see dependencies others miss, performance bottlenecks, security trade-offs, ethical implications, you stop being a coder and start being an architect. A single local change like swapping a model, changing a retry policy, or adjusting a feature flag can cascade across the system in ways that affect latency, cost, reliability, safety, and user trust. At a technical level, system thinking means understanding end-to-end -end data flow, so how data is ingested, transformed, stored, retrieved, and served, trade-offs between consistency, availability, and latency in distributed systems, failure modes like partial outages, degraded model performance, and stale caches, back pressure and retry storms, non-functional requirements like observability, scalability, security, privacy, and compliance, and last but certainly not least, AI-specific risks like bias propagation, hallucination, training serving skew, feedback loops, and silent failure. And here's what most people overlook. The most complex technology becomes valuable only when you can explain it clearly. If you can communicate what's happening under the hood to clients, to stakeholders, and to non-technical people, you become indispensable. I've seen brilliant engineers get passed over for promotions because they couldn't articulate their work to non-technical leadership. Technical skills do get you into the door, but communication skills and not just tech skills are what will ultimately get you promoted. And that's all I have for you in this video. 
To sum up, the tech skills that actually matter in 2026 are AI literacy, data engineering, Python, cybersecurity, cloud and DevOps, and systems thinking. The job market is rewarding specialization over generalization. Pick one or two of these skills, go deep, and build real projects that demonstrate what you can do. If you found this helpful, please hit that like button, hype it, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.